Guess who's getting deposed? Brian Laundrie's parents have been requested to submit to a deposition by Gabby's mother. And it's not for the case you're thinking of. And it may not be for the reasons you're thinking of. So I will get to that. So please do support my work by subscribing. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Please do share these videos. And please do leave a comment or question. I want to know what your analysis is because this video is simply my opinion. It's for education and information. Okay, so we have new filings. So if you just popped onto this channel, Gabby Petito's mother, Nicole Schmidt, has filed a claim for wrongful death against Brian Laundrie's estate. They allege that Brian Laundrie murdered Gabby Petito. Therefore, Brian Laundrie's estate is responsible for her funeral expenses, her burial expenses, loss of companionship and comfort. I'll get to that. I will show you the complaint because you know me. I like to look at the actual court documents. And we're also going to take a look at the deposition notice. And I'll tell you what's interesting about that deposition notice. So stay tuned. Keep watching this video. Hit that like button and please do subscribe. All right. So Brian Laundrie's parents have been requested to submit to a, written, to a deposition, which is an oral examination meaning Gabby Petito's mother's attorney is going to be asking questions of both Christopher Laundrie, Brian's father, and Roberta Laundrie, Brian's mother, separately. He's going to be asking, the attorney's going to be asking questions on the record. He's going to be examining and there could be cross-examination of these witnesses, of both Brian Laundrie's parents in the deposition. And there'll be a transcript. There'll be a court reporter there taking down their answers. And that deposition could be used in the wrongful death claim, potentially could be used in the Petito versus Laundrie lawsuit, which is moving forward. That lawsuit for intentional infliction of emotional distress that Gabby's parents have filed against Brian's parents. So why are Brian's parents involved in this wrongful death damages claim that Nicole Schmidt, Gabby's mother, has filed against Brian Laundrie? It's the state. It's because the judge appointed Brian Laundrie's parents to defend that claim. So now Brian Laundrie's parents are going to be deposed. They're going to be asked questions in a deposition by Gabby's mother's attorney. Okay, so let's take a look at the complaint, the wrongful death cause claim, I should say, against Brian Laundrie. So we get the background here and then we'll look at the deposition notice and I'll point something interesting out to you. And I'll also talk to you about what options do Brian Laundrie's parents have at this deposition. Does the Fifth Amendment ring a bell to any of you? Okay, so let's take a look at the court documents here. All right, so here is the complaint, the lawsuit that Nicole Schmidt filed against Brian Spivey, who was the curator of the estate of Brian Laundrie. Now, Brian Spivey was the one that was served with this lawsuit, but he is not the one who is now responsible to defend against this lawsuit. That is now Brian Laundrie's parents, Christopher and Roberta Laundrie, okay? So what is it that Nicole Schmidt is claiming in this lawsuit? So let's take a look. Nicole Schmidt, as administrator of the estate of Gabby Petito, this is a wrongful death for damages cause of action. She's seeking damages in excess of $30,000. Costs and attorney's fees. Okay, in Sarasota, Florida, you can go ahead and read this. Gabby Pet Gabriella Venora Petito is survived by her mother and her father, Joseph Petito, who are the only beneficiaries of recovery for this wrongful death claim. 
Defendant Brian Spivey was appointed as a curator, but now it's Brian's parents who are responsible to respond to this lawsuit. Brian Laundrie and Gab Gabrielle Petito became engaged to marry, blah, blah, blah. You can go ahead and read this. It's a terrible, terrible tragedy for both families. Um, on July 2nd, they left on a van trip across the country. And then it's believed on August 27th, Brian Laundrie murdered Gabrielle Petito by manual strangulation. It's terrible. The death resulted from the intentional acts of Brian Laundrie. That's why they're suing his estate. Nicole Schmidt and Joseph Petito incurred funeral and burial expenses. That's what the damage is exceeding $30,000. And they've suffered a loss of care and comfort and have suffered a loss of probable future companionship, society, and comfort. Um, and they asked the court, they're demanding a jury trial and a judgment for compensatory damages for all those expenses and whatever the jury or the judge awards and other such relief. Okay. So that's the lawsuit, the wrongful death claim that Nicole Schmidt, Gabby's mother, has against Brian Laundrie's estate, which Brian Laundrie's parents are now the people to defend this cause of action. They are the representatives, the guardians ad litem, the administrators of Brian Laundrie's estate for purposes of this wrongful death claim, okay? Brian Spivey, the curator, is going to be handling the other administration of Brian Laundrie's estate. Okay, so now let's take a look at the default that Gabby Petito's mother has filed. This is a motion for a default, and this is going to be heard on July 19th, so next week at 10.30 a.m. Sarasota, Florida time. This motion will be heard. And it's a default because, in short, Gabby Petito's mother, they're not getting any response to this claim for wrongful death. So you can go ahead and re uh, you can read this. Plaintiff Nicole Schmidt, as the administrator of the estate of Gabrielle Venora Petito, is requesting the court to enter a default against Brian Laundrie's estate. Not Brian's parents, Brian Laundrie's estate. They filed a complaint. It was served on Brian Spivey, who at that time was the administrator of Brian Laundrie's estate, which he still is, but for purposes of the wrongful death claim, Brian's parents are the ones who were responsible uh, on behalf of Brian's estate. Not personally responsible, but on, uh, for responsible for Brian's estate. Okay, Spivey accepted service on May 11th. May 13th, filed a petition for appointment for administrator ad litem, which is what Brian's parents have been appointed by the court as to be administrator ad litem for purposes of this wrongful death claim that Nicole Schmidt has against Brian Laundrie's estate, not against Brian's parents. Okay, on June 13th, the judge entered an order granting a petition to appoint Christopher. Laundry and Roberta Laundry as the administrators ad litem for purposes of defending the cause of the wrongful death claim. Okay, so it's been almost 60 days and they haven't gotten a response. It's been 20 days since Roberta and Christopher Laundry were appointed as administrator and they have not received a response to the complaint filed by Gabby's mother. Therefore, Gabby's mother is asking the court to enter a judgment and a de default judgment. Okay, against Brian Laundrie's estate. And that motion will be heard on July 19th, so next week. So let's take a look at, let me see if there's anything else in here. You can go ahead and read this. Um, they're requesting that they enter a default against the defendants as administrators of the estate. Okay, not personally liable, but as administrators of Brian Laundrie's estate. Okay, you see the difference? All right, so now let's take a look at these interesting deposition notices. So Nicole Schmidt is requesting that Brian's parents, both Christopher and Roberta, submit to a deposition by her attorney, Pat Riley. Okay. So here's the notice. Christopher Laundrie has been noticed that he is to show up on August 2nd at 1.30 p.m. at the offices of Schneider and Riley, that's Gabby's mother's attorney's office, 
and submit to an oral a questioning of Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry separately, submitting to a deposition to the questions. So what questions is the attorney going to be asking Christopher and Roberta Laundry? So you can go ahead and take a look at this notice and I'll show you. Here's Roberta's notice. So Brian's mother has also been noticed that they're requesting a deposition of her. So Roberta Maria Laundry, North Point, Florida. She is to show up on August 2nd at 2.30. So if you notice, the deposition for Christopher, for Brian's father, is at 1.30 and Roberta's at 2.30. So what does that tell me? Short depositions. Why are they short? Because I bet both of Brian's parents are going to be taking the Fifth Amendment. The right to remain silent and not be compelled to testify or to give any answer, any information that could potentially incriminate them in a criminal prosecution, right? And at this point, there's no, the standard for the Fifth Amendment, whether or not it applies, both in Florida, it's in the Constitution, you can't be compelled to give evidence that, you know, it incriminates you. In the U.S. Constitution, the Fifth Amendment and also the Fourteenth Amendment, no person shall be compelled to give evidence that incriminates them. I'm paraphrasing here. So do you think that both Brian's parents are going to be invoking the Fifth Amendment privilege to remain silent and not answer any of these questions? Okay, answering their name, they can't invoke it for that. But did they know? Did they know that Brian murdered Gabby? Were they told, right? Because the wrongful death claim that Nicole Schmidt has against Brian's parents, uh, Brian's estate, I should say, you know, what information did Christopher and Roberta Laundry know about what happened uh, relating to Brian's role in her murder, okay? Her alleged murder, okay? I'll say that for purposes of this video. But if you see here on the notice, it also says the deposition is being taken for purposes of discovery or use at trial and for all other purposes. So could they use their answers, whatever answers they give, in the Petito versus Laundry lawsuit, in the civil action that Gabby's parents have against Brian's parents for intentional infliction of emotional distress? So it's quite interesting. You know, what do you think is going to happen at this deposition? Do you think both Brian's parents are going to invoke their Fifth Amendment right? And they do have the right to not be compelled to give evidence if it's incriminating, if it could potentially lead to criminal prosecution. So I think the reason the depositions are only an hour long, right? Christopher's is at 1.30, Roberta's is at 2.30 scheduled. Is probably because the plaintiff's attorney here, Gabby's mother's attorney, probably thinks that they're both going to invoke the Fifth Amendment and not want to answer any of these questions. Now, does there have to be a criminal investigation going on? Does there have to be a criminal prosecution for the Fifth Amendment to apply? No. If there's a reasonable probability, actually, let me look at my notes here to make sure I get it right for purposes of Florida because, and for the U.S. Constitution, I'm not a Florida lawyer. So the question is um, whether it, is there a reasonable probability, reasonable probability that the answers in the deposition could provide a link, a link to evidence that could lead to a criminal prosecution of either Christopher Laundrie or Roberta Laundrie, right? What information did they know about Brian potentially murdering or did he murder? Did, what were they told? Were they told anything? Okay. Now this information, whatever answers they could be, that they give, could be used against them in the civil emotional distress lawsuit that Gabby's parents have against Brian's parents. Okay. So this Fifth Amendment privilege is broadly interpreted, meaning judges more often will let a defendant, uh, invoke the Fifth Amendment if there's any possibility, 
right, of the evidence incriminating or leading to criminal prosecution. So it's a very broad privilege and it's liberally, liberally construed, okay? And it's a protection, the Fifth Amendment applies under the Florida Constitution as well as the U.S. Constitution. Okay, so we'll have to see what happens here. You know, whether or not the laundries invoke it. Now, they're not, they're testifying as administrators of Brian's estate, right? They're not testifying as the culpability, right, at this point, although I'm sure they're going to be arguing that the Fifth Amendment does apply. Now, if they invoke it at the deposition, the deposition stops, right? Then Gabby's mother, the attorney, will have to file a motion to ask the court to weigh in on whether or not the Fifth Amendment protects the laundries from not answering any of these questions or whether the court decides that the Fifth Amendment doesn't apply because they can't be charged with any crime, right? Maybe there's no crime in Florida that applies to this. I don't know. We'll have to find that out. Or maybe that the answers that they give or potentially could have given in the deposition would not in any way lead to any possibility of criminal prosecution. So again, I'm sure this is going to go to a, a motion asking the court to compel them to answer these questions. So we'll have to see. Okay, we'll have to see what happens. But it's very interesting. Here we are again, looking at the Constitution, that whether or not the Fifth Amendment applies in the deposition for Roberta and Christopher Laundrie and what happens and whether or not they show up. What if they don't show up at the deposition? Well, they potentially could be liable for the attorney's fees and costs uh, for Gabby's mother's attorney, okay? So I'm, I, my guess would be they're going to show up and invoke the Fifth Amendment. And then there'll be a motion, they'll have a hearing, and the judge will have to weigh in on whether or not the Fifth Amendment protects them from saying anything. And what's interesting is in Florida, not in California, but in Florida, if a defendant invokes or any party invokes the Fifth Amendment, right, in, in the civil lawsuit, for instance, in the intentional infliction of emotional distress lawsuit, that, Brian, that Gabby's parents have against Brian, if the laundries invoke, you know, take the stand and invoke the Fifth Amendment, because they can be called by Gabby's parents to testify in the emotional distress and in the wrongful death lawsuit, that if they invoke the Fifth Amendment, the jury and the judge can infer a negative inference. In other words, it can be used against them if they invoke the Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. In California, you can't do that. Okay, there's no negative inference. So it's going to be very interesting. That's why I'm following this case, because it's a very interesting case. Okay, so what do you think? You think the laundries are going to show up at the deposition? Do you think they're going to invoke the Fifth Amendment? What do you think is going to happen? So please let me know. Please leave a comment or a question. I want to know what your analysis is. Please do support my work by subscribing. And thank you for subscribing and helping me grow this community of analyzers. And if you want to contribute to me making these videos, I'll put a PayPal link in the description box below the video. Hit that like button. Do share these videos. And thank you for watching.